Hello, my name is Sandra Grasse. I'm a licensed acupuncturist. I'm a lecturer at the Northern College of Acupuncture in the UK, and I'm a fellow of the ABARM, the American Board of Oriental Reproductive Medicine. Welcome to another video on this series of PCOS advice. And if you haven't seen the other previous videos, please go and check them out now, as this is a continuation of the previous video where I was joined by Maya Harish, a naturopath colleague of mine. We spoke a little bit about dietary advice, then we had a little bit of lifestyle advice, just a few key points for you to know where to start. And today, Maya is here again to talk a little bit about vitamins and supplements. The most common vitamins and supplements in my clinic will be things like NAC and acetylcysteine, uh, the COQ10, the coenzyme Q10. And again, the one that is it's out there all the time, even now, is vitamin D. So my, what would you advise to someone sitting in front of you and asking you, please tell me all you know about vitamin D and what should I be doing? How much should I be taking? I'm going to start off by saying that vitamin D is important because it plays a role in ovarian follicular development and has a potential role in glucose homeostasis. Uh, we also know that about 70 to 85% of women with PCOS are vitamin D deficient, which makes it particularly important to women with PCOS to have their levels tested. And the reason you have your levels tested is because it's a fat-soluble vitamin, which means as opposed to any water-soluble vitamin, which you can't really overdose on because any excess you have, you will just pee out of your body. Um, Fat-soluble vitamins can actually stay in the fat tissues of the body and then they start working against you. So you can actually overdose on them, which is why we don't just say, everybody just take it. Don't just take it. Have your levels tested. And then if you need to supplement vitamin D, you can do that. Um, there are also, depending on exactly where you live, um, guidelines to how long you should stay outside during the day. Um, so that you can absorb vitamin D naturally. But I would say most people probably do need a supplement, definitely. Um, obviously, it depends also on exactly where you live and how much sun you're actually exposed to. And how, I mean, obviously in Ireland, probably your sun exposure is not as great as it is here, and it's definitely not as good as it is in Australia. Um, so, yeah, just... Do the testings, but do the tests regularly. If you start taking a supplement, you also want to start, you want to, you want to test yourself before you start taking it, but then you also want to just make sure that you're not going too high in the ranges. Always make sure that you get support, and in this case, like support from your clinician, whoever is looking after you, and just make sure that you're checking these regularly because, again, you want to have an idea, number one, where you started at, and number two, how is it developing? kind of like you know keep doing what you're doing or change and adapt to do a little bit more or a little bit less or something different for example so just yeah always make sure you consult your clinician when you're trying to plan what you're going to do next apart from those is there anything from your point of view that you would also recommend in terms of uh, obviously for someone coming into your clinic and being monitored but any top supplements or vitamins that would come to your mind when talking about PCOS yeah, I can definitely say that there are three that come to mind. Um, I'm going to again caveat it by saying you, you don't just start taking supplements because somebody on the internet told you to. You have to see a practitioner who has actually met you and can make sure you're taking the right quantities and the right supplements. So don't just start taking them. Um, but I would say um, the top three would be magnesium because that helps improve insulin function. Um, I would prefer using either magnesium citrate or magnesium aspartate and probably 250 to 500 milligrams daily. Um, again, personalized. <laughs> um, chromium probably because that helps increase uh, the cell sensitivity to insulin. And it is also a vital component in glucose metabolism and absorption. Um, so that would probably be between 200 and 1,000 micrograms daily. Um, this one has a huge effect on blood sugar levels, so you definitely want to be continuously monitoring yourself there. And probably omega-3s. 
just because they have produced blood fats and their anti-inflammatory properties and they are also a building block for sex hormones. So you want to make sure that you have everything you need to produce what your body wants to produce. Um, and then again, I would say one to three grams daily. I'm really, really glad that this came up this way and it's, it's so good to link the videos together because I said this from the first video. There is no silver bullet. You're not going to find one thing or even two things that are going to solve all the problems for you. Talk to clinicians. Make sure you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to put the series together this way. And I really thank you, Maya, for being here and also to Dr. Mike Armour for asking me to do this. And please always check with your practitioner in terms of what are your first steps to take. Maya, thank you so, so much for doing this. Really, really appreciate it. I wanted to make sure this was, you know, integrating different aspects and different views and not just me giving ideas. So I really thank you for your time. And yeah, for everybody else, if you missed any of the other videos, please go and check them out. I'll have a summary on screen now on the things that we spoke about on this video. And until next time, be well. Bye. Thank you for having me.